welcome back to my channel. This is Eduardo. We'll call him Edu. This is my fiance. <laughs> so basically, we're gonna talk about the K1 visa, the fiance visa. We just want you guys to be informed about this whole process. Um, we know it's really, 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 really difficult process, especially during COVID with everything that's going on. Um, that way you guys don't feel alone and that way you guys feel like you're not in this just by yourselves that there are other couples out there going through the same thing as you are and that we know the struggle we know how freaking difficult and stressful this is so for the fiance visa we started our process in november mm -hmm. We got a lawyer, uh, an immigration lawyer. Uh, we basically paid her to um, fill out the entire application and to send it over to the NCIS. Um, but we did this because we wanted to make sure that everything mm -hmm. you know, that everything works. went like smoothly. That. Because if you, if you, you can do the process, like the application process by yourself, but if you fill something out wrong or you miss something, um, they'll send it back and then the whole process will be stopped and then you have to send in the new information and then start over again. So we just didn't want anything to go wrong. We wanted everything to go smoothly. So after the lawyer sent everything, I believe it was exactly the November... 30, I think something like that after a couple months of waiting we um, got our first notification in March 4 from the USCIS basically saying that our application um, was approved like that I was done correctly and letting us know that they were gonna send it over to the NVC the National Visa Center and on April 21st we got a letter from the NBC telling us that our case has been approved and that it's gonna go to the embassy in Madrid now. So after getting the not notification on April 21st by the NBC telling us that his visa was now in the hands of the US Embassy in Madrid, we were super excited, super excited because our wedding was August 2 and it's already April 21st and you know, they were letting us know that the U.S. Embassy in Madrid already has his um, visa application. So that was great news. And so basically all he had left was the interview and he had to get the packet from the embassy in Madrid, letting him know what like all the um, doctor's appointments he had to do documents. and all other these other documents that he had to gather and then just take all of that to the embassy in madrid on his interview but of course we all know covid hit around when was it late march mid-march yeah and when that happened we were super like sad and discouraged and freaking out but then we got the notice in april and we were like okay like you know they're still processing but it is october now and we have not heard a single thing from the US Embassy in Madrid, zero zilch. He's always calling, right? Like every Monday. <laughs> like every, yeah, literally every Monday he calls the embassy to ask if there's any updates, if they're starting to file, you know, any visas, if they're doing any interviews, but they said no. So basically, that's where we're at right now. Um, the reason we're in Cancun was because you guys know the borders are closed and I can't go to Europe and Spain, that's where he's from, and he can't obviously come to the US, the US because the borders are closed and because he's in the visa process so he can't come anyway. So after 10 long, 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 long months, <laughs> we finally met up in here in Cancun, Mexico, because Mexico was the only place that we could both meet up in. So that was really, that was really um, something we needed for our relationship, for ourselves, so that we could kind of recharge and 
regain energy for what is to come. <laughs> um, our next wedding day is June 13 of 2021. Because of COVID, you know, our August, our wedding in August obviously got canceled. That was another mess. Um, a lot of our family members had already bought tickets. Um, our venues were booked, obviously. Photographers were booked. Thankfully, the venues and the photographers allowed us to change the date. So now we're just worried that the new date we set, which is June 13, we're worried that he won't make it on that date because everything is so slow. Um, and then I don't know if you guys saw, but the embassy, the U.S. Embassy sent out a notice August, August 28, I believe, or August 31st, one of those, saying that fiancé visas were now number one, like, a priority. It honestly just depends on what country you're from because though they sent that notice a month ago, the embassy in Madrid is still not filing them. So, yeah guys, that's where we're at. But we're just happy we got to spend a whole week together. So you guys, you are not alone. If you are in a long distance relationship and you're also trying to come to the fiance visa, we understand you. Comment down below where you're at in your visa process. And let's vent, let's talk and cry about it because honestly it's so traumatizing mentally and emotionally <laughs> and physically and for your relationship, it's just very, very difficult. But anyways, what's been the most difficult thing about this whole thing? So for me, the most difficult thing is to not know anything about the process because um, when I mean when you spend a lot of time with your partner like everything is more stressful and the embassy is not helping at all I call every single Monday and they like it doesn't they don't tell me anything so mm -hmm. so I don't know anything I, I it's been like I think four months, mm -hmm. four four months since I don't know like anything new and more like five months yeah, more. So okay, so the uh, the unknown is the most difficult part for me. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because you are like in a I don't know I don't know how to explain like in a like you're floating nowhere. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Uh -huh. You are just there. You are, you are like my life is ready to start with 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 her. We yeah, are, we are, we're like, ready to I'm, start. I'm ready to together. move to start a job, and my life my life is just a uh, blow. Yeah, it's, like on pause. It's on pause. Almost. Like I I I can start a work like very like very uh, I can start a very serious job here because. In some months, I'm gonna leave. Like, uh, I wanna, I wanna go there and maybe do a master or you know, get a great job. But I can't right now. Yeah. I can. So during this time, I'm just trying to stay calm, stay positive, stay positive. Yeah, I'll have a lot of patience. Yeah. A lot of communication with her. This is the only thing. But uh, I think the COVID thing also hit us hard because we spent like ten months apart, and that was the longest we've ever. It done. was supposed. I mean, it was supposed for me to go to see her in June. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it ended been 10 months yeah so right Way now yeah right now we're gonna see like we say that if we're gonna we if, if we want this uh, to work mm -hmm. like we can spend that much time mm -hmm. apart nope mexico is gonna yeah. be our best so friend mexico is for the be, next yeah who knows how long so until the borders open up yeah we made a rule and the rule is that we are not spending more than three months, three months apart it's yeah, very important no guys to see each other like. and that's like one of the biggest things with 
long distance relationships, I'm sure you guys know, one of the biggest things is planning your next um, mm -hmm. like meet up like planning when's the next time you're going to see each other because then you have like something to look forward to you know and then if you don't have anything to look forward to what are you doing all? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very and if you don't <laughs> <laughs> this subject it was hard <laughs> but I'll see you yeah if you don't have anything to look forward to like no the first thing we it just makes it so much harder <laughs> the, fir the first thing we um, did when we arrived it was to start planning the next time we will see each other yeah so talking right about now when's the next time we're it's the 9th of october the 9th mm -hmm. so today is the 9th of october and we already uh made the plan mm -hmm. to see each other in January like the end of January yeah after after like New Year's after and New all Year, that yeah. passes yeah but yeah oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're gonna come here again <laughs> honestly Cancun Mexico is so beautiful but I don't know if you guys saw the news but we actually got hit by a hurricane yeah. um <laughs> on top of everything Hurricane Delta hit we got evacuated um we got um sent to like a school and we were all in like little cots in these classrooms and it was just terrifying yeah. <laughs> i had never gone through a hurricane ever in my life like i live in i'm from washington state that doesn't happen there and in you, spain that doesn't happen in spain either so it was really terrifying being in a, a you know strange country and just bam a hurricane being hit by a hurricane but yeah guys, I mean, in the midst of all of this craziness and all this chaos, there's... And it sounds cheesy and cliche, but there's just literally nobody else I would rather go through with this. Like, I couldn't handle going through all this with anybody else. Like, it just wouldn't work. So... Yeah guys, that's where we are. It's worth it, guys. <laughs> just stay strong. I know it's easier said than done. Stay positive. Time will come. Time... Time will unveil or reveal everything. Um, I believe that there's a reason why, like, a reason why everything happens, you know, and we have to trust, um, I don't know if you're religious or not, but trust God's timing. And he knows, he sees stuff that we don't see, and just <laughs> hang in there. <laughs> Love each other. Talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, anyways, guys. That's it for now. We have to, we already packed everything. Um, we have to go check out. But let me know if you have any questions. I will try and answer it to my best of my to the best of my ability. And comment down below about your guys' stories. Um, I love finding other couples that are going through the same thing. Like I'll literally go on YouTube and put like fiance visa or long distance relationships and I don't know, it's like comforting. It's comforting to know that there are other couples out there like that, that it's not just us. <laughs> Anyways, bye guys. Thanks for listening if you did. Ciao. Ciao.